good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to In Studio, presented by Cola this afternoon. Um, we're very privileged to have uh, Robert Stevenson from Cola. He's the lead designer at the um, Cola Design Studio in London here with us today. Um, and Robert's going to talk uh, to us about some global trends, and he's also going to touch on the emotional element of um, the bathroom experience. We do hope you enjoy your talk, and we just want to thank Cola very much for being part of In Studio. Um, and I'm sure you'll agree we've got a great lineup of talks for the day. So I'm going to hand you over to Robert. Thank you. Good afternoon. It's afternoon now, so. <laughs> um, thank you. Okay. So what I want to talk to you about today is to give you a little bit of an insight into how we approach design in Kohler Company. Um, uh, we're a global company, so we've got design centers all over the world. You know, some of the biggest are in the US, obviously, where we're from, and also in China. Um, but uh, I'm actually from a studio in London, which is a very small new studio. And uh, part of the scope of our work is global projects and also global project pr product strategy. Uh, so what I want to do today is I want to just give you a little bit of an insight into how we approach new product development. Uh, you'll see some of the product in my presentation that you can see over in the stand. But um, I guess, uh, well, let's, let's have a look at the first bit. Okay, so if we want to create a new product, and obviously part of Kohler's strategy for design is to create leading edge product design. Uh, so we can look at the market and we can look at what the competitor is doing and then what style trends are already existing in the market in interiors and architecture, but actually that will only tell you about what's happening today. If we want to be in a position of leadership with our product design, we need to be thinking about what's coming next, especially when you think that sanitary wear takes, you know, 18 to 24 months to develop a product range. It takes a long time, so we need to be thinking quite far ahead. Um, so part of what we do is we look at lifestyles. And uh, just because we look at lifestyle, doesn't, or if we look at mindset of customer, it doesn't necessarily mean that customers only have one mindset. Actually, people are, you know, you know they flip from feeling one way about the world, and they might eat in one type of restaurant, but they might be energetic and exercise in another way. So there's a duality or a multiplicity in how we live our lives and how we, you know, we think about lifestyle. So we've got, uh, so, you know, we develop some themes which we think are relevant to our business. So our business is primarily kitchen and bath, but for our studio it's about bath, bathroom, bathroom space. Um, so what you've got there are eight themes, and I would say that you, you could probably find yourself relating to any one or any two or any three. It's not that you're just one or the other. So we like to look at lifestyle because we want to think about what's the philosophical driver for any person, any particular customer. So what's, what, are, what are they thinking about? What do they want to achieve and what, do they, what is aspirational for them? So we use a lot of external resource, but we put these themes together ourselves. So it's, it's designers that are doing this work because we know how this information can be digested within the business. So we have to filter it. And then we obviously we refer to it constantly uh, throughout the course of the different projects that we're going to be developing. Uh, so <clears throat> I'm just going to stand up back a little bit. Obviously important for us is well-being. It's massively important for us as a business because the bathroom is partly the center of well-being in the home. Um, the introduction and the emergence of new technology, uh, obviously very important for every aspect of how we live these days. We look at community and we think that technology is enabling us to redefine community. I think we're becoming more diverse as a as a community within cities or within uh, rural areas. 
Uh, experiences are obviously very important, and then the last one is about classic tech. So I'm going to go through each one in a little bit more detail. But I would say that a couple of the things that are really, really uh, driving a lot of our decisions are the, that, and every one of these is related to experience. Now we are, and a lot of other companies are concerned with product, making product. But if we don't think about how this product is going to be used in a bathroom space, we're missing the point, really. So if we just design it in a white space or in a void, it doesn't, I mean, we don't understand the customer's mindset because actually when they make a bathroom, you, you're thinking about what kind of an experience do I want to have in my home? So we need to think about how those designs fit with each customer's ideas about the experience that they want to have. And I think throughout all of these themes, the, like the development, the emergence of new technology is uh, obviously a key issue. And we'll get to that in a bit more detail. So the first one is about well-being, contemplative well-being. Um, so what we're going to see, I'm going to flip through these fairly quickly. So this is actually an internal document, okay? So all of these things are relevant for us in the work that we do. So we like to create a picture about what lifestyle, how, what defines this lifestyle. So a couple of key words about contemplative well-being are meditative and being concerned with harmony and balance. So we can see that there's, there's kind of a desire to have a little bit more honesty in the world. Excuse me. So uh, I'll give you an example. There's this image down here in the bottom left. It's from a restaurant called Noma in Copenhagen. It's been named one of the best restaurants in the world. And actually, the, all of their produce is locally sourced. So it's not an international menu. It's very, very local. And what it does for the customers there, because it's, it's in Copenhagen, they can go there and they can <clears throat> they challenge their own expectations about what's available locally and what defines them and the place that they come from. So actually, it's a very interesting concept. There's also a little bit of you know, manual c connection with material and product, uh, reconnecting with nature, and then uh, mind and body connection. <coughs> so we also look at furniture, what type of furniture design actually connects with this theme, and interior just to give you a feeling, to give us a feeling about what, how does that aesthetically pull together, and architecture. And we look at the bathroom as well. So, we try to break it down. Sorry, some of these are a little bit difficult to see. But if we want to understand the mindset, actually we need to understand the, like, what's the root philosophical desire What's the philosophy behind this type of feeling? So for contemplative well-being, we've got things like human honesty, balance, harmony, ecosystem. I think as well, and we'll see this in some of the other themes, that the idea of system, or let's say understanding our place within a system, our ability to accept the complexity is becoming a little bit better because we have technology and we have a means to simplify complex systems. Sounds a bit mathematical, but we have a place within an ecosystem. We have a role. We have a responsibility. So, And, you know, we're creating product which, which deals with that. And we, we are, you know, when we say it's about harmony or honesty, you know, we labor over the detail to make, you know, authenticity is a very important part of what we do at Kohler. So if you need to make something which is genuine and, you know, the real solution, we are, we are very concerned with the quality of the product and the authenticity of the product. You know, and this story around daring is, is to do with the glazing effect, and, but the tone is very natural. We've also got Bay 2. 
which is a little bit in between contemplative well-being and proactive well-being, which we'll see later. In the sense that in, from an interior's point of view, it feels quite modern, but then when you look at the product, there's a reverence for the water, there's a reverence for the material, which is, uh, which is quite different. So, I'm going to keep sipping water now and again, so just excuse me if, there's, if I take a short break. Well-being isn't only uh, meditative. You can actually be quite proactive in how you pursue well-being. And again, technology has a, has a big role in how we actually attain well-being or what we can do ourselves. We have a means, a means to monitor our health and wellness and we can control it ourselves. You don't always have to go to the doctor anymore. You know, technology is facilitating this. So in the background, there's that idea of uh, taking control and being in control of your own life and your own wellness. There's lots of products out there which are applications for your smartphone which allow you to monitor your health and well-being. And when we look at interiors then it's a little bit more contemporary. There's still an appreciation for material. There's a, is it a, an appreciation for the exterior but you know, it's, it's maybe not executed in the same, with the same feeling of rustic or authentic or raw as contemplative well-being. But you, as I mentioned at the beginning, you might find that if somebody with this, who you know, does sport in this way, they might be going to have dinner at Noma. So it, you can, it's not one or the other. That's the point I'm trying to make. Architecture, obviously. <clears throat> It's definitely showing an appreciation for nature and trying to do something which is relevant for the ecosystem, but at the same time, it's executed in quite a contemporary way. In the bathroom. And then the, the philosophical background here is about bonding, being pragmatic, self-empowerment is very important. We'll see that again when we get to community. Uh, survival, I suppose, at the the back of everything, everybody wants to, to stay living. So it's about taking action, the power of the individual to take action. So DTV is a, a product that we've got which is about customizing your experience. So you make it the experience that you want. You're not, you're not limited necessarily by very simplistic control system. You can really make it and customize the experience that you want for sharing. So I think this is quite close to this proactive well-being spirit. So more specifically on technology, I think there's a, maybe a, a smaller percentage of the market or our customer base which is interested. Obviously, everybody's interested in technology, but people who wish to, who are maybe what would you call them? Uh, early adopters. So they're very enthusiastic about technology and actually they want to express how smart and how switched on they are to new technology so they like to get things which are very overtly technological or very <coughs> specifically very sp specifically new concepts. So you got things like Airbnb which is a service for everybody knows what Airbnb is now. Uh, this is a restaurant in London where they've got projected games on the table. You know, it's something that you can go and enjoy for a couple of hours. Uh, if you, you can play games with each other, <laughs> I suppose that's part of the concept. You don't want to go there and play games on your own when you're having dinner with somebody, but, well, somebody might. Uh, yeah, I don't want to talk about that. Pokemon. <laughs> Yeah, so curved screen is, is something that which is, yeah, I used to work at Samsung, so I know that there is no, there is no benefit, and so anybody from Samsung here, there's no benefit or improved vision visibility with curved screen. But then again, it, it's nice, people like to have it, it's, cost, it's very expensive, but it's a show off thing, it's not really a practical solution. That's more interesting, I think this um, uh, VR technology is, is, I think it's about ready now as a technological platform. But anyway, these are some product ideas which show you that people, obviously you've got money and then how you consume technology is about 
uh, you know, expressing your status as well. So it's kind of very technological and techy feeling in here, but then there's a slightly more uh, advanced way to do it. I mean, those, these are B&O speakers. We'll see another B&O speaker later, but it's a very modern contemporary interior, but it's very clearly part of the story of the interior. Architecture is very, very statement architecture and very new. Uh, a couple of other products of ours. So there are technological developments within the bathroom which actually cater for this customer. Um, so on the flip side of, um, or sorry, before I get to that, yes, philosophy behind it is about being the first, the pioneering spirit, looking forward, and also a little bit of self-belief and status symbol. So we have some product which is, you know, pushing that concept. Uh, Veil Intelligent Toilet is one of those. So it is about technology, but also I think at Kohler we pride ourselves on how we, how we package the technology. I mean, it's not, it's not all about flashy lights, actually. What we want to make is uh, beautiful experiences. Now, <clears throat> on the flip side of overstated, there's obviously, uh, we can all benefit from technology, but it, it doesn't necessarily have to be very uh, overstated in how you express it or how it's designed. Actually, sometimes, the majority of the time, we're just interested in how the technology blends into our life, how we can get the value from it, but we don't have to talk about it, we don't have to show it off. So I think this is a good example. Uh, it's not necessarily a new technology, but this kind of gesture or motion control technology makes it a, a physically fun thing to do. But the story isn't about the technology, it's about the interaction and it's about the experience. This is a, like a key tray that you put it inside your front door, but also has a phone charger on it. So it's very, very simply designed. It's you know, quite interesting technology, but the way it's executed is very understated. <coughs> and wearable technology is uh, it's maturing so that uh, you know, now we can have things which are beautifully designed and also have some technology embedded in your clothing. Not necessarily all like flashy metal or chrome colored jacket or something which is very overstated. And again, this, this is another B&O speaker. It is a statement in itself, but at the same time, how it's designed is sensitive to the interior space. So it's not necessarily, I mean, it's a little bit overstated, but it also has its own beauty and it fits in quite well. And I think that when, you, when it comes to architecture, there's a, there's a sensitivity to nature, which is a bit more apparent. And this is a very nice example of, you know, there's a lot of technology and, and newness within this architecture, but then how it, uh, fits in with the natural environment or how the natu how much of an, a, a big part the natural environment is to you when you're on the inside shows a little bit more care about the exterior than it does about the interior. So again, for, for bathrooms, it's a little bit more understated. I mean, why does new technology only have to be in a new appearing in a new technological form. Why can't we have, as we do, something which appears classical, but which is technologically advanced? Why would you exclude that customer from the benefit of technology? So seamlessness is still about improvement, driving for better standard of living, but it's a little bit more thoughtful and it's a little bit more measured. So Avid, I think, is a good example of how we've got essentially an understated design, but it has some character of its own. It doesn't shout when you look at it, when you look at the interior space, but when you start to use it and when you interact with it, actually, it's, it's quite a beautiful product to use. Uh, 
and Modern Life is uh, uh, a range that we're going to launch, I think, early next year. And this is really about understated, but actually Modern Life has some very innovative, simple innovative stories within the product around the seat and about cleanability. We make this story about cleanability because everybody labors over cleaning the toilet. Nobody wants to clean the toilet. And I'm not saying that you will want to clean the toilet after this product comes out, but, well, some people might. How it's packaged is, is very simple. It's obviously, it has a, it is designed in consideration for how it's going to be used within the bathroom space. So simple, elegant, contemporary, and importantly, versatile. So it doesn't matter what type of interior you want to create. I mean, it's a good product for many types of interiors, and it, but it has some uniqueness within it, but it's, it's easy. Easy to specify, easy to use, easy to clean, and it's part of our everyday. Um, in, in very dense urban areas, I'm particularly referring to maybe London, Paris, uh, maybe even Tokyo, there's this, I think, I, I mean, you can't talk about this without thinking how technology is actually enabling this. But there is a resurgence in uh, community produce, community uh, know, products and services, uh, restaurants. As I mentioned, I think Noma is still a good example there, but um, like, beekeeping within the city. Yes, there are actually people who bee keep bees within the city. So you can, you know, in a very dense urban area, you can get access to, you can find people. Okay? So for people who create a small business, which is essentially about local produce, or maybe it's a beer manufacturer, they, but it, they specifically say it's London beer, or it's Tokyo beer, or it's, it's not just actually London beer, it's uh, It's from a specific area of London. This is Shoreditch beer. So it's that local. So you can find enough of a market, and it's a small enough scale business. It's not a massive business. The objective is not take over the world. The objective is create something that you believe in and make it on a scale which is appropriate for you to manage. It doesn't have to be big to be successful. So there's a story there as well about what defines success. And it's not necessarily monetary anymore. It's not necessarily financial anymore. Finan and just having loads of money doesn't make you happy, or so they tell me. Um, so if you do something which you're passionate about, it actually can be quite rewarding. And then if you have a successful business and it allows you to provide a service for your community, then it actually it's it's socially relevant and it's satisfying in that way. You can be passionate about it. You don't have to be, become a millionaire by doing it. Food assembly is a, <laughs> sorry, food assembly is a great, a great project. So this is something that's happening in London where essentially the customer, these guys, and the uh, supplier, these guys, they, cut out the supermarket because you know, large chain supermarkets, <coughs> they don't necessarily have the supplier's best interests at heart. And quite frankly, they don't necessarily have the customer's best interests at heart. So I mean, you, they're not gonna, this is not going to disturb their customer base. But actually, the idea is that at certain locations around the city, uh, you have these like one day a week where there's a market. And you know which supplier is going to be there. You can pre-order the produce that you want. You just go there and physically collect it from them. Okay? And they have to be kind of within 150 mile or like a 200 kilometer radius. So that means it's local enough. You know, beyond that, it's, you know, there'll be another market somewhere else where somebody outside that radius would go. But the idea is it's, it's community building and it's making the relationship between the supplier and the customer direct. Who would have thought that that was a good idea? But, I mean, that's how it started, really, but it's back to basics, in a way.
it's better for the customer, it's better for the supplier. Some interiors around that community theme. Yeah, there's, I mean, this restaurant is a good example. It's kind of openness to the space. There's no strict guidelines as to where you sit. It's open enough from a social point of view. So the interior is, the interior can tolerate different types of interaction or different scenarios for people to occupy it. Architecture. I mean, there's a lot of this happening in London because there's a lot of uh, uh, Victorian and Georgian architecture, but becoming very contemporary in how it's, you know, how it's being updated. It brings modernity into perhaps less than modern or maybe you know, old architectural areas. The bathroom has a <coughs> excuse me. The bathroom has a certain ease to it. Lots of natural light. That's the kind of feeling that we want. So for community, like the philosophical background, things about it's a little bit reactionary. There's an independent spirit. There's an issue of sustainability, ecosystem again, self-empowerment for sure. Because there is a lot of skepticism about big business. So if you can, I mean, if these types of people can connect with each other and build a community around what they do, then it's, it's kind of more rewarding for them. And then the other side is about collaboration. Again, if you guys have to say it again, technology might allow a small business provider to access a market, even though they have very specific uh, offering. Or it might allow people to actually connect with each other if they want to do something for this, you know, social housing or local community. It, it may have not felt, <coughs> may have not felt as easy in the past, but now we can connect very easily with people and we can know about, we can find out about this type of thing much easier. Yeah, there are groups which are hacking IKEA furniture. And there's this, like a smaller business, open desk, which is a kit, office furniture. It's a very local business. There's only a few people working in it but they're able to connect with the market. So in, from an interior point of view, there's that, there's a kind of democratic feeling to how it's executed and then it's very much about the people and the protagonists when it comes to this type of feeding or food culinary activity, architecture self-build bathroom so for collaborative sharing capability maybe you know if you want to do something for somebody it's not a monetary exchange maybe it's a service exchange maybe you, you provide a service by re getting a service there's an idea about system as well and it's human centered self-sufficient, I think that's a key one. And empowerment, I think we saw that earlier also. So engagement and experience isn't uh, necessarily uh, strongly connected with uh, product or interior specifically, but it's everything around the product and the interior. This is actually a hotel. Has anybody seen this before? This is, this is, I mean, I want to stay at the hotel. It looks absolutely amazing. But obviously not when it's raining. <clears throat> That's an incredible idea. And it's, an, it's, a, it's really impressive, I, impressive visual idea as well because it, it's, that's a, a totally unique experience. <coughs> Sorry. So... You know, we're experience collectors more than product collectors these days. We want things which are unique. We want to have a life which is full of unique experiences. And uh, as we 
you know, as the technology develops, we can access them and we can make it happen for ourselves more and more easily. And we want to connect with nature, we want to do a craft, we want to be involved, we want to see a culinary experience which is totally unique. We want to look at, see the aurora and visit places that you see on TV. You know, those things are becoming more and more attainable. You don't have to go in a luxury yacht or in a first class, you can go in economy, you can make it economic as well these days. So this one, yeah, it's, it's under product, but actually um, the story here is about big companies making intimate connections with their customers. And that is one of the better examples of how you can make, make a banal experience of drinking a Coke much more intimate, much more personal. And <coughs> I'm very cynical. But I can't deny that it works. It works. If you have an intimate experience with a huge company, it's amazing. It's amazing how you can, you can make that happen. And then it's done in an interesting way as well here with Nike. Also, Adidas have a beautiful one where they, they send you a white pair of Stan Smiths or something, and then it comes in a paint box. So you get all of the paints and the brushes with it, and you just paint, decorate it yourself. So kitchen, kitchen and interior, I think this is, a, this is an interesting kitchen. Um, this is a Nurkiola kitchen for a Buffy, so, sorry, it's not very cheap, but it's really nice. Material finish and the whole concept of creating something which has familiar touches to it. I mean, her stuff is all about, th there has to be like a deep emotional connection with, within your memories and within your experience. I mean, that's what makes it a warm experience. That's what makes it, uh, you've never seen it before, but when you see it, you think, oh yeah, of course, it's, it's done really, really well. So her concept about this uh, kitchen was she wanted to recreate the bathroom of her childhood memories, her grandfather's bathroom. Now, if she'd done that, it probably wouldn't have been sold at Buffy, so they had to add some really, really expensive materials to it. I think there's lava stone and Pat, pat, uh, patterned slate and things like that. So it's a really beautiful project. And then on, down here on the interior side, there's a little bit of indoor, outdoor. Why would you not want to cook with access to the outside or the, the natural air? Architecture, which is uh, slightly ironic perhaps, but you know, you can make, you make an emotional connection with it right away. I think that's the key bit. Again, it, obviously bathroom is a lot about experience and luxury experience when you think about bathroom. It can be quite controlled, but it can also be very naturalistic, depending on what, what kind of thing you want to feel, really. Identity. Global-minded, yeah, I think there's, an, there's, an, there's a thing about connecting with different like, areas of the world or mindsets, cultural mindsets, which you're not exposed to every day or at least in your local environment. It's a little bit aspirational, can be a little bit exclusive. You know, if you're collecting experiences, I mean, why are you collecting experiences? It's for yourself, but also to, to be proud of what you've achieved or what you've seen. And I think we're more free these days to go out and get those things. So there's, there's an optimism about life. Artifacts is a project that we've got which is, I think, when you talk about in emotional engagement with the customer, I think Artifacts is a great example because um, it's about choice. So if you, actually it's, <coughs> it's engaging to think about the experience. The experience of choosing which one is the right one for your bathroom. So the whole project is built around interchangeability. So depending on what your price point is or actually what your design tastes are, you, you choose what fits you, what fits your bathroom. So the actual getting from I'm thinking about that product to I'm buying that product, that, that actual journey is quite engaging. We want engaging experiences. It doesn't matter whether it's after your bathroom is built or 
the process of choosing which product that you want to use. It should be engaging. And it should transport us somewhere. Marrakesh is a beautiful project which takes you somewhere. And as I mentioned before, when we were looking at daring, we, we labor over the detail. We labor over the authenticity of the product. If you want to get that, if you want to achieve this kind of feeling, this is authentic, this is genuine. So it feels true, but it also takes you somewhere else. I mean, you can have this bathroom if you're, you know, if you've got a one bedroom flat in Berlin, you can still have a Marrakesh bathroom and then when every time you go to the bathroom, you feel like you're somewhere else, it takes you somewhere. Briolette is a beautiful project, beautiful product um, with beautiful material, great execution. Again, it, there's a joy of material which goes beyond simple functionality and it becomes a story about beauty, curation of detail, statement of design. So the last one is uh, classic tech. Obviously, as I can keep saying it, but as technology matures, how we make experiences which, which are luxurious. Also, we've got a new palettes of ways to make luxurious experiences. And luxury brands and luxury hospitality, they're, they're definitely thinking, they are doing. Uh, they're taking advantage of these new tools that they've got at their disposal. Actually, at, now it's at the point where if you don't do it, you're missing something. And usually it's around the pre-purchase experience. But there are exceptions to the rule. So again, as with, um, as I mentioned earlier, when we looked at um, you know, a traditional bath with advanced technology, there's no reason why it can't work that way. So for products, we've got you know, this saddle is highly, highly technologically advanced. But it's the right application for technology, and it's the right kind of delivery of technology. And the emphasis, you, know, you don't see any of the technology when you use it, but you know it's there. And that's one of the keys to luxury products. You've got something which is obviously very beautiful, but there's always something that you know about it that not many other people know about it. So there's that exclusive knowledge, and maybe only a few other people get it. That's kind of key to getting a luxury experience. I watch with Hermes. Obviously, car, the car industry is quite advanced with technology. <coughs> Interiors are generally fairly, they retain that high-end feeling, especially in material choice. Material quality is, is always essential, like the choices that you make for materials, the rareness of material, but then execution doesn't have to be classical. Actually, the color material and finishing speaks the most, let's say, about where you position yourself in terms of classic feeling, classic but modern, perhaps. Yeah, I, I, I think, I feel that this, um, this is a Bulgari hotel in Milan. This exterior design, I mean, obviously if you look at the interior, it's beautiful as well, but it's very elegant, it's very classic, but very modern, a little bit austere. It's almost, I don't know if anybody, anybody's been to Milan, but there is a lot of fascist architecture around this hotel. And I think without specifically referencing that period in their history, there is a certain um, gravitas or austerity to the design, but then it still speaks about luxury because it kind of closes off the windows a little bit. It provides great views from the inside looking out, but it actually feels a bit more closed from the outside. So when you're walking along, going to your Ibis hotel, you think, I'll never get in there. Uh, bathroom, again, it's still m predominantly about material. Can be very modern, very clean, but dark. Pools of light, S like low level or small amount of natural light, feels a little bit more mysterious. So there's, a, there's definitely a sense of entitlement with classic tech, a little bit austere, stringent, disciplined. Um, it makes a statement, 
And you want, you want to know that that product is authentic and honest. You want to know that right to the core of the brand that the, what you're buying into is authentic. It's real. So we have Composed, which I think matches this quite well. Again, it's quite minimal. But um, it's a little bit austere as well in, in the in this form. But it allows a very contemporary type of interior. But again, as I mentioned before, the, like the material, the light, the, the presence of the painting is a great example of touches of uh, classicism, um, but in quite <coughs> sorry, in quite a clean and modern way. And that's all of those. So I would very much appreciate any question or if anybody's got any comment. Yes. What is Kohler's design philosophy and how do we apply it to South Africa? Um, we are, uh, because we're a global business, that we have to, you know, we want to have a consistent global message. So we we're currently building uh, a core range of suites, which are, and we say suites rather than just fixture or sanitaryware projects, because with this core range, these are experiences. So we're working really hard to make sure that the choices that we make for these global suites have global relevance. So there, there is a, we need to build um, part of our brand value through this, these stories. So we, we should have consistent stories across regions. Having said that, uh, I mean, as you can probably tell from this kind of work that we do, we are very sensitive to movements in every region. And we, want to, we need to know what's happening in each region to inform us that our decisions about global projects are correct or that they will be relevant in every region. And in some regions, we are you know, going, going beyond global products and we're trying to create products which are specific for regions. If that region has a specific need, specific design need or because the interior is are usually built in such a way you know there might it might come you know the day might come in the future where we think South Africa needs something that nowhere else does and we need to provide a solution for them so I think the, the two things that just to briefly recap the two things are we need to understand everywhere if we want to be everywhere it takes a lot of time and effort and then the other thing is we're not closed to the idea that each region might have something unique. And unlike, I'm going to have a poke at our competitors, unlike some of our competition, you know, we care about regional unique issues. Actually, a lot of our other competitors are, just have a mono vision about what sh should be global. And you know, we believe in artistry and sensitivity to culture. We explore cultures. So we like to, we like to understand. Long answer. <laughs> Anybody? No? Okay, well, thank you very much for your attention. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Robert. If anyone would like to view more of the Cola products, um, Cola does have a stand in Hall 5, stand number K24. Um, so later on in the day, if you make your way that side, um, you can visit their stand. Thanks very much.